Hello, welcome to another episode of Talking About Rock. I'm Rob Edwards. Before we get today's guest, let's check in with Jerry Schmidt in Nashville to see how they're keeping the torch alive there. Hey, Rob, how are you? Good. Hey, we got a Thin Lizzie on St. Patrick's Day on Thursday. It's the guy from the Ace Freely Band, Phil and Jeremy. And uh, Greg Mangus is singing lead from Rock United. And uh, Paul Simmons is going to be on drums from Light in the Black. Um, some of our favorites here in Nashville are coming together to uh, form a local super group, so to speak, on St. Patrick's Day and uh, doing the, uh, the music of Thin Lizzy. So that should be great. And um, I have to mention that um, a bunch of ladies are getting on Wednesday night to uh, do a benefit for the YWCA of Middle Tennessee. It's called Women to the Front. A night of empowerment benefiting benefiting the YWCA of Middle Tennessee and uh, our friend Tanya Leanne from Lydia's Castle is performing that night and uh, we're going to be talking to Lydia's Castle next week on Talking About Rocks. So I'm looking forward to seeing that show and um, speaking of front women in local rock bands. We have um, one from Buffalo, New York today. Yep, Tell today we have that. with us an explosive rock band from Buffalo, New York that formed in uh, 2012. They quickly worked to become one of Update New York's premier cover bands. And as fate would have it, they attracted the owner of GCR Studios, Robbie Takak, from Buffalo's own Goo Goo Dolls to record their debut EP, Wade. They would then go to follow up with their uh, debut album, Turning the Ashes, and their latest release, Between the Lines. Please welcome to the show, Stephanie from Hearts and Hand Grenades. Hey, Hi, Stephanie. Hey, how's it going? Good, good. Thanks for having me. Yeah, excellent. Great to have you on the show. So you guys got a got a nice shot there in the beginning. You got to uh, play the Variety Kids telethon and uh, and uh, support the Goo Goo Dolls there. Tell us a little bit about that. That'd be amazing. Yeah, yeah. It was a pretty pretty cool coincidence, I think. Um, so we we landed a, a time slot at the Variety Club Telethon, uh, our, and it just happened to be right before the Goo Goo Dolls were playing. So, you know, and we were only a cover band at that point, you know, so we were just doing the local cover scene. Uh, we got to play two songs, and then, you know, as we're getting ready for our set to start, we look out, and there's the Goo Goo Dolls, you know, standing behind the cameras, and we're like, oh, no, don't. No. That's your ultimate don't screw up moment, right? There. Right, right. But, you know, it was <laughs> It was great. You know, we had a really good time. We played well. Um, so after the Goo Goo Dolls played, we were downstairs at the, the hotel bar. It was at the Seneca Niagara Casino. Um, and Robbie came down, you know, and he stopped to talk to us and tell us, you know, that he thought we did a great job. He enjoyed what we played. Uh, and he asked where we did our recording. So, you know, at that point, we're like, well, we don't, you know, we, we just play cover songs and that's really it. Um, you know, so after our conversation with him, where he was talking to us about his studio, GCR, um, you know, he would, he told us we would be, you know, really exciting if, if we could get in there and take a tour of the studio. So we're like, okay, yeah, you know, sounds good. He wanted to hook us up with uh, the manager there and he gives us his phone number. So at that point you're thinking like, and eh, he's not going to call, you know, okay, thanks. Great to meet you. He's not. Gonna yeah. Call. Robbie's a busy guy. Yeah. He likes to do a lot still for Buffalo music. Yeah. Sure. With his music, yeah. his art and all kinds of stuff. Right. Yes, and he's an amazing person. So when he says he's going to call, he did. You know, so we were really excited about it. He did exactly what he said he was going to do. He hooked us up with the manager at GCR. Uh, we took a tour of the studio and we actually booked studio time without having any songs written. So we were like, all right, this is exactly what we need. You know, let's get our nose to the grind and let's write some songs. So we did, we came up with four tracks. Um, it was actually our, our EP which later turned into our first album it was four songs that you know kind of two of the four got incorporated into the album um but if we never had that conversation you know we may never have done any original music at all you know so it was right. a, really, a really cool experience for right us. it's all about being in the right place at the right time meeting the right person yeah. you know the right thing happens and and things yeah. can move forward yeah definitely yeah absolutely. so so it had to be a task for you guys switching from uh covers to originals right and trying to work those into sets that's that's not easy a lot of times it doesn't go over with folks right sometimes you have to slowly slide them in and and that's kind of when folks like going to the bar getting another beer and stuff like that yeah. and how was that received when you guys first started doing your original material 
Yeah. So, I mean, and obviously Buffalo, New York is a huge cover scene. You know, they love their cover music here and it's actually a little bit more difficult for original bands to, to play out and fill a room here. Um, but in, we still play cover gigs now, you know, even a couple years into this. So we just sneak them in, you know, if, if we have a room full of people that have been following us and it's our, you know, hearts and hand grenades fans, then, you know, we, we'll talk about them and we'll say, yeah, all right, here's, you know, this one. Uh, but normally we don't say anything at all. We just sneak them in and that's how you really gauge, like, you know, is this song a keeper? Is, you know, is this something that's going back to the drawing board? So it's, it's a fun outlet to say hey, we're playing a cover gig and then we're going to sneak in maybe something that we're working on just to see what the response is, you know? So, it's it's a neat dynamic, I guess. You know, if nothing else, it's fun that we have the opportunity to do that. Right, right. And then you retur returned to GCR Studios, and uh, I think Rob hooked you up with uh, Justin Rose to do Turning to Ashes, yes. right? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, Justin's awesome. He's a very very skilled sound engineer, and he makes the the process so easy. It was so comfortable to work with him. Right. So being that it was like the first couple times in this studio, he probably really could show you. You know, maybe how, how you want to arrange things or how maybe you could get different sounds out of your instruments or things like that, or, you know, different mi different mixing techniques and things like that. I know it's always interesting. We had a, a producer on the show and he kind of gave us a little behind the scenes of some of the st stuff that he does to, to help musicians kind of bring out some stuff that they wouldn't normally think about. You know, did you get that experience in the studio with them? Yeah. Some stuff so I was like, hey, yeah, that's that's great. We didn't even think of that. Yeah, we absolutely did, because at that time, none of us had ever done this before. You know, we we hadn't been in a studio recording because we had never done original music. Um, but Justin made it really easy. And sometimes, you know, you hear that that's one of the most stressful processes for a musician is to go into the studio and, and figure out what you want your sound to be. But he has a way of just, I don't want to say dumbing it down, but when you don't really know. Right, right. right. It can be intimidating, right? Yeah, absolutely. But no, he, he was really casual, really fun, and he made the experience just very enjoyable. So we did. We got to learn about some of the equipment, you know, the huge master board. And like, so it was really fun. Cool, cool. Excellent, excellent. Yeah. So can you tell me about your relationship with Eclipse Records? Sure. Yeah. So uh, I'm not even sure how it initiated. It was kind of a, between Mike and Chris Poland. Um, but we, we ended up having conversations uh, with Eclipse and that initially started through an email and I almost deleted it because I thought it was spam mail at first. So, you know, I, I go to Mike, I'm like, we just got this email, that, you know, with a band email. I'm like, oh, it's some Eclipse records. They say, oh, hey, I want to work with you. And I'm sitting there going like, oh, yeah, you know, you get a million spam mails about people just saying like, oh, someone tracks you because you're in a band and then all of a sudden your email blows up with stuff related to bands. Right. I was like, oh, I'm just going to delete this. And he's just, he turns around and he's just like, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, you never know sometimes. Yeah, we get we get a lot of spam email, too, about all kinds of different things through social media. It can be crazy. Right. Yeah. So it worked out. You know, we answered the email and, and the relationship developed and we ended up signing with those guys. And we've been with them so far the whole time. So it's been really fun. That's awesome. Excellent. Uh, I noticed you guys played a bunch of dates in the time zone this past year um were you well received out there most of the bands we talked to kind of stay in the midwest and the northeast um it seems like the um the mountain time zone states are kind of uh vast and kind of a no man's land um what was the reception like out there yeah i mean it, it was kind of different well it was definitely different in the the midwest versus that southwest area um yeah the the midwest was was really into the rock music um they just seemed like they love music there so i almost feel like we could have played anything and they would have been you know all about it um getting over to some of the other states it was hit or miss you know some states that you know they had never heard of you so if we got like a head bop from the crowd we're like okay it's something um but then we went to colorado springs that i think is by far my favorite place to play uh the studio or the gig was sunshine studios um, you know, we, the room was packed and it was just, they were so into just music and everybody was just so grateful at the time because, you know, uh, with COVID shutting a lot of things down, we were still really happy that we were able to get out there and just play anyway. Um, you know, so, and you could just tell that that whole crowd of people, they were just as grateful to be out listening in a group setting like that as we were to be playing. And it was just a really, just an intimate experience 
you know, so it, we were, we felt very connected to that place. It was really, really an exciting time for us. Yeah, it's definitely all about the live experience, and and it's it's so great to see people are are coming back to that, you know, and realizing you know they need to go out and check out these bands and and support the different bands that are out there if they if they want to continue to see that and then keep the torch alive. That's what we say here. So yeah. let's um let's take a quick pause here. We're going to play the uh, video for Turning to Ashes from you folks from the uh, debut on uh, Talking About Rock. Sounds good. Okay, we're back here on Talking About Rock with Stephanie from Hearts and Hand Grenades. Just checked out the video for uh, Turning to Ashes. So, so how was the debut received? Um, did you guys can still continue to do covers and 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 originals, or did you just did you start really pushing the original material? 
Uh, no, we were doing uh, both, you know, a heavy, a heavy blend of gigging for, for both. Um, the debut it was awesome. The only downside to it was that we released it when really there was no live gigs available, you know, like, so that was right in January um, of 21. And it was, it was hard to promote it the way that you normally would, you know, normally you'd want to get out, set up your shows, travel, and we couldn't do any of that, you know, so at that time we were more focused on writing than we were necessarily on trying to, to squeeze a gig out here and there because New York State it was pretty locked down for a while. Um, but I think because of that, we were able to just keep working and that's really why we ended up with the two albums basically in the same year. You know, we, we had all the songs ready to go at the end of 2020, released in January of 21. And then we still had all these songs that we were working on and we just, we decided we didn't want to sit on that. So we basically just kept going, you know, we kept writing, we kept working um, where we could get a gig here and there when, you know, we had the brief openings, we definitely played it. You know, some of it was, was cover stuff. Um, we did, I think a live stream of house of the rising sun at one point uh, through eclipse, you know, so that was pretty fun. But we just we did anything that we possibly could just to stay busy. Yeah, that's what we even heard from a lot of artists. You know, during the downtime, they they took that time to do a lot of writing and things like that, and and get their projects together. There's been so much stuff that was kind of put on hold, and that's what we're seeing like a a big flow now of different releases and and different tours coming out by the major artists. You know, every, every other week there's a, another tour announced where they're like, okay, these cities are ready to go. Let's 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 start doing stuff, and and that's great. Yeah. You know, and I, and I know in Buffalo, it's 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 kind of hard because there's really not a lot of venues around here. So it's great you guys are, are expanding and getting into different areas. And I think you, you had an interview in, in, in PA the other day. Are you going to be playing some dates out there? Well, we talked about it. Uh, yeah, we were out at a couple of radio stations. Um, the last one was in Lock Haven, PA. Uh, those guys were great. It was uh, for Quick Rock out there was the name of the station. Um, yeah, and you know they they asked us if we would be willing to travel back there, and you know absolutely that was our answer. So yeah, um, we're hoping that you know that comes to fruition and it actually happens because we love to. I mean, there's no there's no place that we aren't willing to go. You know, so yeah, that's definitely the way you got to be. You know, Jerry and I talk about this all the time. It's kind of a, a tough time for rock music right now. It's not. It's 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 always been you know like the stepchild or the you know the the not the top of the list you know type of music at the time there was always something that was a little hipper a little cooler a little dancier that people really got into yeah. uh, you know rock's always been the underdog but it's great to see younger bands coming out there and and still forging ahead and and doing original new material i i think is is so tough now you know especially with with the way with it is now with streaming and things like that you don't have a product that you're selling you know and and right. you probably don't have a lot of backing from from uh who's ever helped you distribute, you know, cause they used to, you know, do all the touring and set stuff up for you. So even that I'm sure is very, is very mm -hmm. um, dumbed down a little bit and, and not given as much probably, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And you know, we do, we're doing most of it on our own. Um, it's still, so it, it, even with Eclipse, you know, you're still at an independent level. So, you know, we're trying to book our own tours, you know, we're trying to make our connections, but you know, when we get an opportunity, like, Hey, come visit our radio station we're going to do it. You know, that's you, that's how you build those relationships and, you know, you make your contacts that way. So, you know, we're, I think right now it's fair to say we're definitely in that stage of still creating our network. So wherever we can do some networking and, you know, and make some new contacts, we are all about it. Yeah, I totally agree with you. It's all about the networking at this point, definitely about the promotion and stuff. So I wanted to talk a little bit about the songwriting process. Um, you know, as far as like the lyrics or, or getting ideas for songs, you know, is 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 there like a formula the guys use? Sometimes I know bands usually they like come up with riffs and they say, okay, I got this riff, so let's write around it. You know, or sometimes, you know, someone is, you know, really big on lyrics and they write a lot of lyrics and they say, okay, I got these songs. Let's, let's, <laughs> let's put some music to it. You know, how, how do things usually pan out for you guys? Is it a mix or? Uh, it's, it's mostly the guitar riff. So Mike is usually the guy who comes up with the guitar riff, you know, and he, he actually sits down with me, um, you know, we kind of just mold that into whatever the song turns into, um, you know, so it's his guitar parts. And then we usually put my bass parts to it. Um, at that point, we'll bring in Kenny, uh, you know, he'll work out his lead lines. And I usually just keep this really loose, 
um, like digital notepad on my phone that I use. And anytime I think of an idea for lyrics, I just jot it down. So a lot of these songs don't necessarily start to finish, come to like one writing session for like, here's all the lyrics for the whole song. It's usually like, hey, I have these little blurbs, you know, that I've been throwing into this notepad for, you know, a month or whatever. And then I just sort of like twist them and mold them into, until they fit. Um, but once we have the music down, it's easy for me to go into that that cue I have of, of little notes that I jotted um, and, and just kind of pick out the ones that I think are going to make sense for this sound. So it's it's really a fun process. I mean, I I really enjoy the way that we do it. You know, it's it's a collaborative effort, but it usually does start with the guitar riff and then it just sort of blossoms from there. And you kind of actually kind of overheard them when they first were doing starting this band and you said, Hey, hey, can I, you, you wanted to join? I guess you were talking to, to Mike oh, at, uh, at, he's a seventh degree black belt, right? And you guys were like yeah. at a karate class or a karate dojo. Yeah, that was back in 2012. So it was uh, him and his friend, they were talking about just putting together a cover band at that time. And I was working out at the dojo. And, uh, you know, we're doing a warm up jog. So you, everybody's running in a circle. So as I'm running by these guys in the circle, because, you know, of course, they're standing off, you know, to the side. All I hear is, you know, both, nothing, nothing, nothing. We're talking about this band. And then they go back around. Da, 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 da. We need a bass player. <laughs> I'm like, guys, I play bass. And then I come back around. Like, no, you don't. You know, and it, it was just, it was a hilarious conversation. But that's really how it started, you know. And then that's, that's how I, I met Mike. And it, that's really how, you know, the, the music, came to be, you know, just because I, I chimed in and butted in on their conversation. Right. Being in the right place at the right time again. Yep. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. It's worked out. <laughs> exactly. So your next release you guys uh, put together with Between the Lines. Uh, I, I really like enjoyed that. I was checking that, all your stuff out today and listening to that. Now it sounds like a little more polished and you took a little bit more time with that one. Yeah, you know, I you, I think you can hear the growth from the first album to the second album. But, you know, like I said before, we really just, we never stopped writing. And I think we did have more time just because of COVID to just focus on each track individually because there was nothing else to do, you know, which worked out in our favor. Um, but I agree with you there. Like, we, we all felt a little bit better about the second album, too. You know, we had, we all, I think, had a, a better experience going into the studio now because we sort of knew what to expect, where the first time we were just winging it you know really um but yeah it it was an easier flow i guess going from the first one to the second one yeah you can tell definitely tell the, the earlier ones a little bit more raw and you can usually hear that with a lot of bands you know uh yeah. motley Crue's first album you know for example very raw you know definitely can you can you can see how that it, that changed the to the uh, newer albums and stuff like that but i wanted yeah. to take a quick pause here and we'll play the video for between the lines here and have, have folks check that out here on uh, Talking About Rock.
Okay, we're back here on Talking About Rock with Stephanie from Hearts and Hand Grenades. Just checked out the video for Between the Lines. So like we're saying, you know, a little more polished, you know, from the from the first release, you guys kind of found your groove a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh yeah, definitely easier the second time around, for sure. So do you have any songs written for the, um, the next release? Are you continuing to write songs or are you yeah. just focusing on, on touring now? and playing live yeah i mean we're, we're doing both i guess you know we've got a couple of things lined up uh for the summer we've got obviously some local things along the way also um we're working on a uk tour in october which would be awesome um but in between all of that yeah we do have maybe three songs right now that are just in the starting phases of them you know so we're just sort of putting together the the musical pieces we don't really well we do have lyrics for some of them but um it's early stages but they're definitely on their way and i feel very confident in saying that we will likely release something additional maybe near the end of 2022 we'll see but yeah we we have no intention of stopping so as long as we've got the inspiration to keep making music we're going to just keep rolling with it well i love the sound i think it encompasses the um the older classic rock, as well as some of the um, the newer rock that you hear on the active rock stations, and um, I was just wondering what the uh, the makeup of your audiences was. Um, do you find that uh, that it's mostly older people like uh, Rob and I coming out to the shows, or do you find that uh, you're getting um, quite a bit of the, uh, the twenty somethings coming out to see you perform? Yeah, no, um, it's, we actually have a really good mix and our sound, we, we definitely have the classic rock influence, you know, and then we, we go right into like a punk rock vibe, like bad medicine. We've got the weird swanky sound of the in crowd on the first album. Um, and it sort of just happened that way. You know, we didn't go into anything with an idea of this is what our sound's going to be. And this is what we stick to, you know, we, we just try to, to be outside the box with it uh and i really think it's paid off you know so with that we do draw in all different ages of people to come and, and see our music and they they seem to enjoy it you know so as long as we can give something to everybody we're, we're just going to keep going with it yeah just from watching your videos i could see like the different influences like a little bit of punk a little bit of hard rock in there uh definitely a little bit of chrissy hind to your voice there also uh -huh. I yes. could, I could, I could hear that from the in the classic rock there also coming yeah. through. Oh yeah, and, and we all have different influences of music that you know we enjoy. Um, you know, Mike's the big classic rock guy. You know, he he's a hardcore ACDC fan. So you know, in a lot of his riffs, you know, he's playing the rhythms. You can definitely hear that. Um, you know, Kenny's more of a southern rock guy. You know, which I think you can pick up in his solos. Uh, you know, and me, I I come from uh, more of more of like a, a punk pop background and Tom as well, you know, on, on his drum beats for it. So it's it's a really, really fun just conglomerate of different influences that we put together. And, you know, that's just what's defined us. And I think that even in our band name, you know, it's two very contrasting things, hearts and hand grenades, um, you know, and it just it, it was too perfect for, you know, what we, we accidentally created the sound that just fits well with that contrast. Yeah, it's a great name. So I got to ask about the bass guitar. When did you start playing bass guitar? So <laughs> the long story of it uh, is that it started, my enjoyment of the, the bass started when I was in fourth grade um, and they make you pick an instrument. So, you know, I didn't know. And I was like the shortest kid in my class for the longest time. So I go to the orchestra teacher and I say, I want to play the bass. And he laughed at me. I mean, I was I don't know. I feel like I was three feet tall in fourth grade, but he laughed at me and said, no, pick something else. It's too big. So then I said, OK, I want to play the cello again. He says, no, nope, that's too big. And he hands me a violin. So, you know, from fourth grade to my senior year of high school, I played in the orchestra. I played violin, you know, and that gave me a good foundation for music and, you know, being able to play and read. Um, but then as soon as I hit college, it's like I was like, that's it. I scrapped money together, you know, and I went out and I bought this cheap, crappy bass guitar. And I just sort of taught myself at that point how to play it. Um, and I did that, you know, listening to just some easy punk stuff. 
uh, you know, real fast pace, you know, and I just, I fell in love with the instrument right there. I was like, this is what I've been missing my whole life, starting from fourth grade when I was told no, you know, so, and then I just, I have been playing it ever since. Um, and then the first band I was in was in 2012, you know, with, with Mike and uh, the other guys from that cover band. And I just haven't stopped from there. That's a great story. So who are some of your biggest bass influences? Uh, I'm a huge Muse fan. So Chris Wolstenholme, he's like right up there. I love him. I think he's great. He's my favorite by far. Yeah, yeah Muse is a great band. Yeah, yes they are. One of my favorites of the uh, the last 10, 15 years or so. Yeah, they definitely have a, a unique original sound. Yes. Compared to yep. a lot of stuff that's out today. Mm-hmm, I agree. Totally. Absolutely. So, um, you got to hook Rob up here with Robbie Takeak. He is um, dying to get him on the show. Well, I'm oh. sure I'm sure he's a very busy guy. We we love to speak to him. Uh, we reached out a couple of times, but I'm sure he's oh. a busy guy and uh, he's got stuff going on. But since you did bring up Robbie, I did want to ask you, and maybe it's in the back of your mind because they're going to be playing here coming up in September. So any 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 chance or any vibes you guys may be playing the gig with them or playing with them again at some point yeah any any uh, of that rumor going around a little bit the rumor mill no uh, there's nothing in the works right now but we would certainly be open to it uh and you know you you always get your shameless plugs in there where you can so here's mine hey robbie Call us. <laughs> I know we, Jerry, Jerry got our shameless plug in too. I don't know if he ever watches our show, but yeah, Robbie, we'd love to talk to you about everything you do for Buffalo, about the Goo Dolls, about, about, you know, everything about uh, music is art. You know, we really appreciate everything you do. I went to the first time this past summer. It, it was, it was amazing. So yeah, good stuff. Good stuff. But uh, I wanted to take a quick pause here. We're going to play one last track from uh, Hearts and Hand Grenades. This is a really nice song. I, I really like it. It's called uh, Beautiful Pain. So if you guys want to take a pause here, and we'll check that out here on Talking About Rock. Yeah, that is a good one. Mm -hmm. Hello, dear man. 
Okay, we're back here on Talking About Rock with uh, Stephanie from Hearts and Hand Grenades. We just listened to that beautiful pain. Yeah, really, really like that. Uh, the videos you guys, you guys got coming out. You know, keep them going. It's 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 really nice. Thank you. So so what else is up on the horizon? I know you got some dates coming up. You'll you'll be playing. Uh, I think your next date is May fifth, Mohawk Place in Buffalo with Sponge. Yes, yeah, we'll be opening up for Sponge at Mohawk Place. Uh, you know that that's going to be a fun one for us because I'm a huge like '90s fan also. So as soon as I saw Sponge was coming to Buffalo, you know, I nudged Mike and I was like, "Reach out to Mohawk Place." <laughs> Luckily, it worked out. You know, we got we reached out at, at the perfect time, and they were looking for the openers, so we were like, "Yes." Yeah, they have a lot of new music playing there. I've seen. I, I definitely need to get there and check more music out. And then you guys got a date coming uh, August 26. You're doing Rock for Vets in yes. was it Farewell, Michigan? I think Farewell, Michigan. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we're really excited about that. You know, it's it's benefiting you know the the local veterans. So it's really important to us to be a part of things like that. So we were really grateful that we got to be on it. Uh, but that's another incredible lineup too. You know, we've got Saving Abel, Saliva, Nonpoint. You know, so. Right, I was surprised to see saliva on that bill. I, I wasn't sure yeah. what was kind of happening with them at this point. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, that's very cool. Definitely, definitely. So, yeah. folks want to great ladies bands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, folks want to know more about you or check you out. Where where should they go? Should they check out on Facebook or what's the best place? Yeah, uh, we have a website, so it's heartsandhandgrenades.com. You can get all of our dates there. All of our links to our socials are also there. Um, but we're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, we're on Vero. I'm going to be honest and tell you that I'm not sure even how to use that one yet because it's very. <laughs> I don't think I know that one. Know. Yeah, yeah, that's a new one. That's a new one on us, too. We're still trying to figure out if we want to do TikTok or not. So <laughs> we're on TikTok also, but again, I, I'm not good at TikTok either. Yeah, we're trying to figure we're trying to figure that out. And you guys are going to be on season three, episode 16 of Band Together Buffalo, too, coming up. Yeah, yeah, that was exciting too. We were glad we got to be a part of it. Yeah, I think that's that's where I originally got your name from there and was checking that out. Yeah, I lo love seeing that show and they they showcase all different types of music from from the Buffalo area, which is great. You know, everybody thinks there's only a couple things in Buffalo, right? They just think there's snow, chicken wings, losing yep. sports teams. But you know what? We got a lot of good rock and roll coming out of here, you know. You know, we had, you know, we had Rick James, we had Google Goo Dolls, we got you guys coming up. So let's let's just hope it, it keeps moving forward as it is. Yeah, oh, it's always always been a great city for rock and roll. I know. I just don't think a lot of people out there don't know it. And we just need to keep pushing that forward. And hopefully you guys will do the same. So we, we really appreciate it. Absolutely. And if you folks out there have questions or comments for us, please feel free to email us at talkingaboutrock at gmail.com. Please like us and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. And for this interview and all our upcoming interviews, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Stephanie, thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate it. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, looking so forward. Much. Looking forward to some great things. The sky's the limit for you, as far as I can tell. So that's yeah. right. Keep I going. Really it's it's, it's good stuff. Yeah. Keep going. Yeah. We will. Thank you.